Hi, everyone, and welcome to SAG After Foundation's Conversations at Home series. I'm Elizabeth Rome, the director of Switched Before Birth. And before we invite our guests into this conversation, Justina Machado and Skylar Samuels, the stars of Switched Before Birth, I want to take a moment to mention that the SAG After Foundation is a nonprofit organization, and they base their ability to give emergency support as well as their educational programs to performers entirely on donations. So I want to just draw your attention to that. During COVID, the SAG After Foundation was able to give $6.5 million of support to at least 7,000 uh, performers. So if you are a performer and you're a SAG After member and you need help, please ask for it. If you can give help, please do give it. And I want to thank our supporters for uh, sponsoring this conversation. So without further ado, I'm so excited to introduce you to the two phenomenal stars of Switch Before Birth, Justina Machado and Skylar Samuels. Um, I, hi, ladies. I'm so happy hi. to be here with you hi. to talk about our new movie, Lifetime Switch Before Birth. Um, first of all, you guys killed it. The movie's phenomenal, if I do say so myself. It was an honor to direct both of you. Um, it's interesting to me to talk about, you know, obviously acting, but for those that don't understand or haven't yet had the privilege to star in a movie, you know, how you made the decision to, to choose this film, how it came to you, um, how it landed on your lap and why you basically decided to do it. What spoke to you in your heart about this film? Um, Justina, you want to? Sure. Start? Okay. Um, uh, I think Stacy Mandelberg came to me and, uh, and her partner and uh, I had re read the script and I just loved the character of Ana Ramirez. I loved the character. Uh, I, you know what really got me, what really made me want to do it was that monologue. That monologue that she has in the in the courtroom. I was going to say church. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? Could you they're, they're all the same. Uh, the, uh, the monologue in the courtroom. And I was like, this is an incredible monologue. And I was just drawn to, I'm always drawn to characters. And I just, I, I loved her as a character. And I really thought I had something uh, that I could do something with her. So truly that's what uh, drew me to the project. Well, it, mu it must be entirely true because by the time you stood up to the to the pulpit, you were ready to rock. And uh, I think we may have done two takes of it. I mean, everybody was just in awe of, of that performance and it rippled through the studio and um, just just it was it was so incredibly powerful. And actually, in regards to this latest uh, news about this couple that their embryos were switched, it feels really timely um, that we made this movie switch before birth. Skylar, let's talk about what drew you to play this part and, you know, what what, you know, as an actor really um, compelled you to explore your character and choose to do this film. Well, um, I was lucky enough to meet you last year um, over Zoom. We met um, to talk about a different project and I loved you right away. So I knew that I was like, whatever this woman does, I want to follow. And then when this script came across my desk at the beginning of this year, I think similar to Justina's experience, I laughed out loud, I cried out loud. And everyone is so perfectly imperfect, you know, especially Olivia Crawford is only a few degrees different, I think, from myself, which was a first to get to play someone who probably has more real parts of Skylar in her day-to-day -day life, um, which is kind of scary. It was a little bit more vulnerable of a role to play someone who was closer to me. And I loved that there's no real right and wrong. Like you're looking at two families, two couples who are doing their best just to make it work. And there's really, it's so hard to say what you would do. Like, that's what I love is that this isn't like a black and white movie. Like it's very much real life. It's messy and it's beautiful. Um, and it has such heart. So I was so excited that um, you called me back and we got to do it together, which was a good reminder too. You never know who you meet and where your paths will cross again. That was a really, really good reminder. Yeah, it is a good reminder. You know, you audition and sometimes you, a lot of the time, maybe all the time, except for that one job, you don't get the job. And to sort of reference that for actors who are with us today, you know, that just feels like part of the gig. Um, you're tough in the tough parts and you're soft in the soft parts and how you balance that is incredibly difficult. Um, but you don't know where one of those auditions that you don't get leads. And so, I don't know, Justine and I've talked about it a lot. We're friends and yeah. I've spent a lot of time talking about the process and acting and our careers. And it's just like, never give up. 
you know, know that you have a story to tell in your heart and that, you know, you have a fire in your belly that is unlike anybody else's. And so, you know, let the rejections roll off your back um, is always the best, I think, advice to just stay in the game. Uh, the process is a really sort of mercurial thing to talk about. Everybody has a very different way of approaching their work. So I would not want to even ask you what you drew upon because those are your personal secrets. But it's interesting to me as an actor, um, you know, how you may not have personal aspects in your life that make you like your character, but you just have this deep need to play the character. Um, you know, neither of you guys are moms, but you play uh, moms with a fierceness and a depth and an emotion that is so real and palpable. Um, I don't know if there's anything you want to talk about, just, you know, what you drew on or, or what inspired you or what was your North star and sort of, or what that feels like in other films that, you know, you're very different from the character, but you find that like reservoir of what's true for you and who that person is. I think that, you know, you approach, I mean, myself, I can, uh, uh, every project is different, right? You approach every project differently. There's not necessarily a formula. There's not like a formula on how to go about this certain project. I think what I drew on for this one, like you said, I'm not a mom, um, but I'm the oldest of five children and I'm 17 years older than the younger ones. So there was a lot of uh, help in my, you know, me helping my mom and my stepdad with the kids. Um, but also I think speaking to you because you went through this journey, the IVF journey, and also speaking to Yancy Arias because he and his wife went through that journey. So that was super helpful in this situation. And like I said, I know the feeling of loss I know the feeling of wanting something so badly and you can't have it. I know uh, devastation. I know like true love. This is all my acting career, by the way. <laughs> I know all of these feelings because of acting. <laughs> exactly, because of the audition process. <laughs> I know all these feelings. But I, so the, I drew upon all of that to play this role. But each role is different, right? Each role you approach differently. Mm. And uh, that's the way I went about this one for Switch Before Birth. Skylar? Yeah, I mean, as far as... Um, the relationship with the job, all of those things you said are so true and then some, and I think anyone who is pursuing acting or a career in the arts can attest to that. It is mm -hmm. love, hate, up, down. It is all of the things wrapped into one. Um, and, you know, I, I hope to have children in the future and I come from a big family as well. I'm the middle of five kids. So I'm used to sort of being around that big brood and, to me, it was always a given. I was lucky. I had young parents. I thought that's just kind of what you do. You're young. You just pop out a bunch of kids and try to get them into one car. And Bo, Bo Yokely certainly did. During yes, exactly. <laughs> we'll get into uh, that later. <laughs> yes, we will, because that story is crazy. Um, <laughs> but all that being said, I just sort of took for granted that fertility was easy. People just yeah. had kids. And then I got older and I, you know, started to experience girlfriends and family members who were running into infertility issues. And it was like my complete ignorance. I had no idea what a challenge that could be and what a fight it is for so many women just to pursue their dream of becoming a mom and how complicated that is. Especially, you know, women were supposed to be designed to just know how to do it. And so when it doesn't just work, it is like, I feel frustrated. I feel like a failure. And I think we can all feel that way about other things besides our sort of, you know, biological dispositions. But going along that journey with some of my closest friends and family members really opened my eyes to just how difficult and emotional and taxing that can be both, you know, spiritually, mentally, physically, and um, to have the opportunity to portray someone who's going through that was all the real life bits and pieces of my loved ones. And I hope I did them justice in the movie um, because I got to live it firsthand with them. And I think it's such an important story to tell as it affects so many of us. Well, generally I think people suffer in silence and that's an unfortunate thing, whether it's miscarriages or fertility issues or depression or, you know, whatever, you know, we do suffer in silence as a humanity, I think sometimes. And I what I feel 
is we need to become advocates for each other and talk about our truth on behalf of each other. So we give each other the freedom to mourn publicly, grieve publicly, you know, really be genuinely, you know, who we are and what we're going through. But we also have a responsibility to each other as human beings to, to uh, share our struggle so that nobody either walks blindly into a situation like in this case, infertility. For me, I discovered at 34 that I was infertile and I felt very frustrated with the women before me who had not come out publicly about it because had I known, I would have been more proactive in my 20s to what, I don't know, freeze my eggs or just be more knowledgeable or be an advocate for myself with a gynecologist to ask for hormone tests or what have you. So movies are an opportunity for storytelling, but they're also an opportunity to start a conversation and to get into some of the harder things. And at least for me, I've wanted to loudly talk about the journey of motherhood because somehow I feel like there's a shame and a stigma attached to being infertile. And I think that that is utterly unnecessary. In fact, it doesn't help the generation behind us who want to have children, um, you know, power, knowledge is power. And movies like this can give people that knowledge. And so I'm incredibly proud to not only be a part of this with you guys, but that we're also not just making a movie, movie, but we're part of a movement in creating more awareness around this topic because it somehow remains still a stigma and a taboo today. Um, as you're talking about it being in your 20s, oh my God, I will remember when that was. Um, <laughs> You know, you're you're now informed, you know, I hope you're armed with more information, um, you know, and that's really what we, you know, owe the reproductive generation uh, to, to give you guys the information that we have or things that we have that have been hard won for us. So um, that said, what do you hope just as far as, you know, that topic, what do you hope people take away from this? What knowledge do you hope, especially you, Skylar, you know, because you do want to have children, you know, what do you hope the audience takes away as far as learning about their fertility and their future family? Sure. I mean, I think like you just said so eloquently, I hope that it empowers women who watch this to ask questions they didn't think to ask or they might be afraid to ask. Um, while I'm not knock on wood to my knowledge and fertile, certainly after doing this, I'm like, our next physical, we're doing all the things, we're just gonna check it out because it's just good to know. I don't think that we're always necessarily empowered to just know our bodies and what's going on in there, whether or not we have anything we're trying to accomplish with them or act on, um, you know, I've got an autoimmune disorder. And so that can be an equally frustrating and ambiguous process, much like infertility and learning the hard way. You really do have to be an advocate. And if someone tells you you're fine and you know that you're not, don't take their answer as the truth. It's like, you know, you best. And so I hope that um, certainly our movie and these stories of Anna and Olivia can encourage women to feel brave to ask those questions and do those things. And I also hope that it not only takes the stigma out of infertility, but the stigma out of being a working mother or what it means to be a mother. I think there's a beautiful balance between Olivia and Anna in our movie, which is Anna is a mega businesswoman crushing it. She's got restaurants, she's at the top of her game. She has this full career. And that there's a sense of shame that she waited to have children because she wanted to build this amazing empire. And there should be no stigma with that. The same way I think it's true that Olivia is 27 and her whole life, she's dreamed of being a mom. She's an IV IVF addict. She is an IVF addict. We gotta own that. She totally is. Because <laughs> more than anything in the whole world, she just wants to have children. And I think that that shouldn't be stigmatized either. I think we're in an odd moment in our culture where everyone has an opinion or a stigma about something. And I think it's time to kind of let that go and that both are okay. Whether you decide to wait or you know you don't wanna work and you just wanna be a mom, they're both good choices. It's what makes sense for you and your body and your life. So I hope across the board, switch before. Well, hopefully by doing this film, we we create the conversation to become, you know, more exposed 
And it becomes also more financially affordable because um, your character and your husband um, get into some financial disrepair by having to do all of these cycles of IVF. So again, as we continue to have these conversations, hopefully we make progress much like you know, with breast cancer, the more we fight on behalf of each other as women, the more we move the conversation forward and it becomes just natural. Then we know we always do a breast exam or every time we go to the gynecologist, we test, you know, our hormone levels and things like that. So back to acting. Um, so I just, um, I'm curious as an actor, are you guys, um, do you have a hard time letting go of the work or are you just, you know, you sort of just flick the cigarette button, the, the, the building goes on fire and you're like, I'm out of here. The performance happened and it's easy and you leave it behind, you know, um, like Angela Bassett and, uh, you know, um, are you, is it, you <laughs> yeah, they're waiting to exhale. Right, is it easy for you to walk away from it or is it, you know, do you carry it with you for a while? I'm sure every role is different. Yeah. I think every role is different. I mean, I don't, I think I have the capability of doing that, but I'm not sure, you know, uh, I, I think about death a lot and I think that it has to do with six feet under, do you know what I mean? So I think it did affect me because every episode opened up with a death. So I remember I thought about the, my funeral, I think about, and I still think about it to this day. So mm. I guess that stayed with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, I, I think I'm able to to let go. Of course, if there's something very, you know, I just did this pilot uh, for Amazon and Blumhouse, the horror of Dolores Roach, and that was super intense. And you, I, I think I needed to let it go at the end of the day because it was so intense. So that's how I can keep my world safe. You know what I mean? For myself. And uh, yeah, I have the ability to do that, but. I, but but then again, like I said, I'm not sure because I still think about death, you know, so, you know, I don't know if that's normal or if it's <laughs> six feet under. I don't know. Every role is different, right? I mean, I think about American Hustle and for me, that was an accent and I really was more method with that. And then you think about something like Law and Order and it was, you know, you leave the set, you, you're done or whatever. But you guys had very emotional roles. Um, every time someone sees this movie, it's performance, performance, performance. It's all about the strong performances, even for the guys. Actually, Skylar, will you tell the anecdote of how Bo Yokely literally his whole story kind of mirrored the film? Oh now, this God. is an actor in the movie who actually probably was motivated to do the movie because it was so much like him. Yeah, I kept saying to Bo, you're going to boot camp because Bo <laughs> Yokely, who plays my husband, Brian Crawford, in the film in real life is married to a woman named Olivia who was super duper pregnant while we shot this. And I believe that real life Olivia gave birth two or three days after we wrapped. Like it was so crazy that we had these parallel experiences. So when we had the birthing scene, I was like, get ready. Cause in like three weeks, you're gonna do this for real. So it was really kind of- It was like his own personal Lamaze class doing a birthing scene with you. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and, um, and it was fun getting to know his wife. Like we would talk to her over FaceTime and I would ask questions about the pregnancy and some of the things that she felt or like, how she would sit down when she felt like her back hurt at the end when she was really big, like all of those things. And real life Olivia uh, is lovely. And it's so cool that Bo is yeah. actually had now at the end of this whole experience. It's interesting, like Justina said, in a way you guys came at it, you know, in such a pure, um, unadulterated way. I don't know if what that means, actually. I'd have to look that definition up. But what I mean is that, you know, your life experiences, um, you know, didn't mirror the script, so to speak, but the, you know, the, but the guts and the emotion of your characters fueled everything, whereas the guys really did have similar life experiences that drove them to want to do the, do the movie Switch Before Birth. Yancey, like um, Justina said, has done rounds of IVF to have um, his children. And so he was very emotional about the movement aspect of the movie. Right, Justina? Yeah, he was. He and, and that's very interesting that you just said that, because mm -hmm. I didn't even think about that, that Bo and, and Yancey were coming at it in a, from a different perspective, you know, which is and we're the ones going through it. <laughs> and, yeah. You know, so that's so interesting. But yes, Yancey was very passionate about it. And I think that was a big besides him being an incredible actor and he was so great for the role. I think, I'm sure that had a lot to do with it, too. You know, the fact that he knew so much about this journey. So I learned a lot about uh, about it. I, like I said, through Yancey and through speaking you know, to you, too, both of you guys helped me a lot 
with what this whole process is because I've never done this. I've never gone through rounds of IVF. You know, I was always somebody personally that never wanted to have children. And that's interesting too, because now they allow you, like Skylar was saying, to say something like that. But can you imagine? I used to say that in the early 2000s and everybody was like, no, that's not true. You're going to change your mind one day, freeze your eggs. And it, it's so weird. It's, it's like, we're just supposed to. We're supposed to want it. We're supposed to be able to do it right away. And we're supposed to all of these things. And there's even not even shame and not being able to and shame and also right. saying you don't want to. That's right. right. That's right. And also there's shame in, you know, having miscarriages and yes. you know what I mean? Being women is just so your character. We get a lot very deep into, you know, what it's like to experience a miscarriage and um, I do. I think there's some really deep themes in this about, you know, female empowerment, about having family and really about love stories, because at the end of the day, it's not just about infertility. Um, this film is actually about love. It's about family. It's about marriages. It's about friendship. It's about your friendship. What was it like? I know because I've actually acted with Justina and sort of meeting somebody for the first time and, and, and just and exploring that and building a relationship. Um, do you find that you like to just jump in the deep end? Um, or do you need to spend time uh, offset, like nurturing a relationship? I mean, how did you guys, you have such a beautiful friendship in this movie. Um, did it just, was it natural? Did it come easy? I don't know. I was too busy picking out like props yeah. and stuff. Yeah, right, Skylar? It was like, I think we met like once, you know, uh, in Atlanta before we started. And yeah, it was pretty natural. It was very easy to be friends with Skylar Samuels. I mean, she's oh. lovely. She's lovely. <laughs> and so, you know, it's like, it was natural. I think you, I'm the kind of person that could jump into it, but I respect everybody's process. So whomever I'm working with, if it's important for them to get together, I have no problem with that. You know, I have no problem with getting together and spending time together. I think because a big portion of my career has been guest stars and reoccurring, I'm used yeah. to being the new girl that walks in, you know what I mean? Like the one that has to kind of get to know everyone. So that's easy for me, but I also understand, you know, building a relationship. So I'm just, I go with the flow, whatever my, my colleague is into or not into, you know? Yeah, it's really interesting evolution just from an acting standpoint, you know, going from being the actor that always has to justify what's thrown at you because you're just like a visitor passing through yeah. to them being the star where you have to fight for the flame, so to speak. You have to say no and you have to fight for the text and you have to, you know, all of that in general. And then, and even direct your show, which I know let's talk about um, just one day, one day at a time, because that was such an incredible show. Everybody loved it. You were phenomenal in it. Everybody was great. Um, but you also then pivoted into being the focal point and, uh, and we're even going to direct that show. I mean, one day at a time was one of the greatest jobs I've ever had because the showrunners and the studio and the network, uh, everybody was so collaborative. It was never, and there was no ego. There was no ego with the showrunners, with Gloria Calderon Kellett, with Mike Royce. If there was something that didn't ring true, it was very easy to go in there and say, this doesn't ring true. Let's work on this. There was no like, well, I wrote it. You shut up, you say it. You know what I mean? And kind of, we, you know, I've been on sets like that before, you know, a long time ago. And thank God it's a lot more collaborative, but it, it, I, there's this certain, I found it exhilarating. I was so excited to be number one. <laughs> I was so happy to like be the leader of that because I have been on sets where I, I just feel, you know, it starts from the top, right? So you set the tone, you set the tone on that set. And I've been on sets where the tone was just not the greatest tone. And mm -hmm. one of the things that I always said was, if I am ever lucky enough to be able to lead a show, everyone is going to know how important they are in this show. Everyone is going to have a voice in this show. Yes, at the end of the day, you know, if, if there's something that has to be, uh, decided I will, you know, usually you're the, you're the person that says yes or no, but I never did that. I was always wanting to know what everybody in the cast thought, what everybody wanted. Cause to me, the best shows are ensemble shows. The best show is, is where everybody shines. Mm -hmm. And I think that was the beauty of one day at a time. Everybody, any fight I ever had, and I say fight, not in a, in an aggressive way, any, whatever I ever had about the show was always about the show. That's it wasn't right. about me. 
It wasn't about what I wanted. It wasn't about what would make me look good. It was like, what would make this show like just shine? And uh, oh, yeah. it's exhilarating. I, I loved it. I loved every second of it. And it's hard to go back. <laughs> it's hard to no. go back after that. It's like, wait, wait, what? It's hard. I know, you know, I'm thinking about like read throughs and fighting for material and so forth, like Jane the Virgin. I always looked forward to those read throughs. You were a much bigger character on that show. And thinking about like Law and Order, the read throughs on that lasted so long uh, because actors are invested and they and they have a responsibility to the text and they want it to be the best that they can be. So finding that voice as an actor is really important to know your value and to to know that you have insight on the script and the story that is that you have a voice and that you should be heard. Um, Skylar, just I'm curious, when did you decide you wanted to be an actor? And, you know, like, when did you feel you've arrived and made it? I don't know. I don't I don't think we've ever entirely made it. Um, I, I I heard Tom Hanks was was asked in the actor studio something like he said, they said, um, you know, how does it like feel like to have made it? He's like, huh? He's like, I still have to audition for things. Um, but Skylar, just it, was there a moment when you were like, OK, like it were it happened. I'm here. Um. Well, I, I do want to say something what you guys were talking about before, because Elizabeth, you are really, I'm in, in debt to you for this. Like Justine is talking about an environment, right? And like, especially sometimes too, as far as process goes, like we don't really have the time to get to know each other the way we want or the time to sort of like get emotional and do the thing. Um, as you well know, Elizabeth, you sat with me in a couple of closets crying and trying to keep it together on busy days where we had a lot of emotional material to do. And that can be so hard, but you made it so possible and so free to be able to do that. And I think with our movie in particular, like you said, this is about love, this is about friendship, this is about loss. Everybody knows what that is. And it's almost impossible, at least for me, to not feel that in real life, just because it comes like that understanding of what that is comes from real life pain. And so it can be kind of hard to just leave it at the office at the end of the day. But you made it such an incredible, safe and collaborative environment to do that. So thank you. Um, as, as Do you, can I ask you guys a question just as a sidebar when you come back around to it? Because we're running out of time. But when you think of it, do you feel it, it's a different experience being directed by an actor? Does that feel distinctly different to you or no? Well, I think so. I mean, this kind of correlates to your other question. I've been acting since I was seven. So as of this year, I've had my SAG card for 20 years. I'm very Ooh. proud. <laughs> um, and I... I have no reason why I wanted to do it other than it was just like innately in my body that I was like, I got to do this. I don't know. I just arrived with that purpose. Um, and I love to do it. And I agree with you. I don't think you've ever made it. I think to be an actor is just to keep trying to make it happen. Like even when we set goalposts for ourselves, if we get there, it moves further. There's something else we want to achieve. Like, I don't know that there's ever like a, I'm good. I've made it kind of place. Um, and I worked with Fred Savage when I was maybe 12, I think. And he directed me in an, a Disney show when I was a kid. And I thought he was just the coolest. And of course I had kind of missed the fact that he was a child actor. And then I was like, oh yeah, I know who you are. And I thought it was so cool. It was such a positive experience. And that was my first time with a director who had been an actor and it changed the whole approach. And it like moving forward, I was like, that's a treat. So like working with someone like yourself, getting to work with directors who have acted, I just feel like they can speak to you in the process in such an informed way that makes the whole thing feel more flexible, more safe, more creative. It really is amazing. Yes, I agree. I agree. I think that there's an, you know, exactly what Skylar said, not that we haven't worked with amazing directors that are not that weren't ever actors, but I think it's important to know what it's like on that other side. I think it's important to know when somebody is, not that somebody has a bad attitude or that somebody, it's important to understand, you know what I mean? That, that, that we're not in conflict, that we're actually working together. And I think that that happens a lot with direct actors turned directors. They understand the process a little bit better. You know, not all of them, because like I said, I've worked with amazing ones, but the actors that turned directors I have worked with, like yourself, uh, like Phil Lewis, um, you know, and I, I'm sure I have more that I can think of. It's, it's, 
I can be more vulnerable, I think I can like, and be more honest and, and not think it's going to be held against me because you know, cause you've been there. Mm-hmm. So that's how I feel safe. I feel safe that way. Um, we have run out of time. Uh, one, except one thing I know this is about the actors, you guys, it was a privilege to direct you. It was a privilege to share an intimate, vulnerable space with you. I love you. Thank you for making Switch Before Birth amazing. If you were going to leave actors with any piece of advice, what would you give them? Oh my God, Sky. <laughs> I You're mean, like, oh my God, just don't quit. Like, don't quit. You're insane. No, just kidding. <laughs> um, um, no, I just don't quit. I mean, I don't think quit. you said it. Don't quit. It's like, don't quit. Try as much as you possibly can to get your ego out of the way. Uh, raw talent is awesome, but you have to work at your craft and you never stop working at it. Just like Tom Hanks said, he doesn't feel like he's made it. If Tom Hanks doesn't feel like he's made it yet. <laughs> <laughs> He was probably being a little bit humble. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I love him. But yes, I think that's it. Just uh, it's it's, you know, talent is is important. Perseverance is even more important. Absolutely. And I think a piece of advice that's been very helpful that I have to remind myself of every day because I still audition and test and don't book and go through that struggle every single day. I auditioned yesterday. I'm we all do. Get off this call. It's just part of it, right? It's yeah. just part of the grind. And that really is the work. The 98% of it is just getting the job. And so being able to enjoy the job when you're there, I think is important. But also to love something else as much as you love acting, I think will always allow you to love your job. When it's the sole object of your affection, She's going to let you down. But I think when we're able to love something else as much as we love this and just sort of be real people, have real lives, be interested in other things, travel, do things, experience the world. I think yes. the more of that we have, the better we are at our job. Yeah, like like get That's a life. Get, get a life. Like get a life so you have some yeah. balance. So it yeah. just, you don't strangle with too much neediness the art and let the art uh, unfold. Oh. That's perfect because I never, I didn't do it in my twenties. I let it strangle me. You know what I mean? And that is amazing advice, Skylar. I let it strangle me and it was all about the business. I didn't even, I wouldn't even go on vacation. I'd be like, what if they call me for an audition? (laughs) That was my, my whole twenties, you know? So uh, yes, that is such beautiful advice. I wish I would have heard that uh, when I first got here. All right. Well, listen, um, I don't know about you guys, but when I see the SAG Awards on television or I've been privileged to be in the audience, I love that part where they say, I am an actor. I'm an actor. And I am proud to share this space with you guys. And on behalf of the SAG After Foundation, thanks for talking about your process and just being vulnerable about your experiences and your cast and your fellow performances and your careers. And just thank you so much for being in Switch Before Birth on Lifetime. Thank you, Elizabeth.